If you're working as a health, fitness, or a wellness professional, you're absolutely going to run into clients that are dealing with low stomach acid. And science is now showing us all the significant health problems that can come about from low stomach acid. So if this is new information for you, down in the description below this video, we'll put a link to our why your clients need stomach acid video so you can check that out. But in this video, we're going to share 10 signs of low stomach acid so you can help clients figure out if this is a problem for them before the real trouble shows up. Let's jump in. TC Hill is not a doctor and does not claim to be a doctor or licensed in any type of medical field. Don't be an idiot and use anything heard on the show as medical advice. This information should be used for educational purposes only and you should contact your doctor for any medical advice. Now get off me. Now, just keep in mind that none of these signs are diagnostic. None of these things mean absolutely that your client has low stomach acid. These are just possible signs that can show up. And most people are not going to be dealing with all of these signs. If you have a client that's dealing with all these signs, he's really a champion. He's really needing a little bit of help because most people are not going to deal with all of them. But if you have a client that's dealing with one or more of these signs, it's worth looking into if low stomach acid is an issue or not. So we're just going to rip through these signs, but know that we have more in-depth videos on pretty much all of these topics, and we'll put them in the description below this video if you want to dig deeper and understand how some of these things come about or what makes them happen and, and how to correct them. But sign number one is burping or bloating, and your client doesn't need to be the captain of belching. Even if they're just having those small burps, that can be a sign of low stomach acid, and we like to ask clients, you know, are you burping? Even just those small burps. And sometimes they'll say no and then they'll come back the next day and like, you know what, I really am burping. I guess I didn't notice that. But this can really be a strong sign of low stomach acid because burping or bloating is usually an indication of some type of bacterial overgrowth in the stomach or the small intestine where bacteria shouldn't be. Our beneficial bacteria should be in the large intestine. They shouldn't exist in the stomach or the small intestine. And when there's bacteria in there, they usually create excess gases, which can create pressure and push that air back up and create a burp, or it can cause a person to bloat. And this bacteria shouldn't be in the stomach because the stomach acid is what kills them. It fries them in this acid bath as they come in on the food that we're eating. So when someone doesn't have enough stomach acid, it's really common for them to have some type of bacterial overgrowth in the stomach or have it moved down into the small intestine as well. And this extra pressure that the gases from the bacteria can create can also cause food to come back up, which brings us to our sign number two of acid reflux, heartburn, or GERD. Yes, all of these things are caused by not enough stomach acid. They're not caused by too much stomach acid like advertisers tell us. So if this is new information, be sure to check out our video on why I have acid reflux so you can learn more about this LES valve at the bottom of the esophagus that's triggered by stomach acid. And this LES valve needs to close to keep that reflux from coming back up. Now, another strong sign about this is, is if a client is taking a PPI or some type of acid reflux medication, or maybe they're just using antacids, all of these things are made to turn off stomach acid or the antacids will neutralize stomach acid. But in either case, the client is turning off stomach acid with these medications. So that's almost a confirmation that stomach acid is low. Sign number three is indigestion or digestive discomforts. You know, ask the client, do you kind of feel like your food just kind of sits there like a rock in your stomach for hours? This is a really strong sign that there's not enough stomach acid to break that food down, especially a high protein meal. Like if a client eats a steak and it just kind of feels awful and just kind of sits there forever, then that steak is not being broken down because they don't have enough stomach acid to break that protein down. So without enough stomach acid, the food will need to break down by process of rotting and fermenting. And this rotting and fermenting can create excess gases and toxins. And that process can also take a lot longer than it would take to break your food down with a proper level of stomach acid. So this is a really common sign of low stomach acid. And this can bring us to sign number four, which is chronic nausea. If the food is rotting and fermenting in order to break down, that can create a lot of excess toxins and just make the system feel a little bit more toxic and make that person feel nauseated. Now keep in mind that poor bile flow is also a very common cause for chronic nausea. So go ahead and check out our video on 10 signs of poor bile flow in the description below this video so you understand maybe if clients are dealing with poor bile flow and that could be creating their nausea. 
Number five is signs that your clients can see in their stool. We want to teach our clients to be stool gazers. All the cool kids look at their stool and see if there's any freaky parasites coming out or any kind of aliens or something like that. So a client can learn a lot by looking at their stool. Constipation can be a really strong sign of low stomach acid. Our stool moves through the system at a pace according to its acidity level. So when a stool is not acidic enough because the food did not get acidified properly in the stomach before it moved into the intestines, if it's not acidic enough, it will move a lot slower and then the stool will get more dry and hard and be harder to move. So this is a really common sign for low stomach acid is constipation. Now there are other causes for constipation, but with chronic constipation, a lack of stomach acid is often at least a contributing factor. A green stool can be another strong sign because if that stool is a green color, our bile is green. And that bile comes down from the gallbladder and it meets the acidic stuff that leaves the stomach and then it creates this sizzle and it helps us bust all our food apart and really digest that food correctly. But the green bile meeting with this acidic stuff that leaves the stomach makes the stool brown. So when the stool is still green, it's often because there wasn't enough acid to mix with that green bile and make it a nice brown color. You really want the client's stool to be a dark brown color. That's what they're shooting for. Another sign is to see undigested food in your stool. Hello, when you're seeing food come out the other end, that's a strong sign that you weren't able to break that food down. As humans, we should really conquer our food. Just because it's common to see food coming out the other side doesn't mean that it's what a client should have. We really want to break that food down correctly so it's a nice brown stool. Sign number six is a loss of appetite. If that food is rotting and fermenting and that process takes a lot longer and it's creating a lot more gook down there, and it's almost like the body's sending this signal that's like, hey, don't, don't send more stuff down here. I'm still dealing with the mess you sent down here before. So this can make a person not hungry very often and they kind of lose their appetite. Now, interestingly enough, sign number seven can be the opposite and a person's hungry all the time. So if a person doesn't acidify their food, they're not going to really break it down and get the nutrients out of that food. That's why people eat food is to get the nutrients out of that food. So if the body can't really break it down and get the nutrients out of that food, it's going to scream for more. It's going to be like, hey, I didn't really get what I thought I was getting. Can you give me more stuff? So doesn't it make sense that if a client can only get 10% of the nutrients out of a cheeseburger that they ate, that they might want to eat 10 cheeseburgers to get the same amount of nutrients that you and I might get out of one cheeseburger. So we really want to help clients break that food down correctly or they might be hungry all the time. Sign number eight is low energy. Well, we need to break our food down to turn that food into fuel. So if a person can't acidify their food to break it down, then it's hard to turn that into energy. Now, an interesting thing about this is that if a person doesn't really have enough energy to get up and get off the couch and go do something, they probably also don't have enough energy in the body to create that hydrochloric acid in the stomach to help us break down our food. To make hydrochloric acid, the body needs minerals and resources and, and energy from the food that we ate, but how are they going to get the energy out of the food if they can't really break it down? So a person can get stuck in this cycle of, I don't have energy to break my food down and then I can't break the food down well enough to get minerals and nutrients out of that food that I need to make hydrochloric acid so I can break the food down, and they can have broken digestion for years or decades. Now there are other possible causes for low energy and chronic fatigue and all those things, but it's really common to see low stomach acid when someone really doesn't have enough energy to get up and go. Sign number nine is significant cravings. If someone's craving junk and carbs and sugars all the time, this can be a sign of low stomach acid because all these carbs and processed carbohydrates are a lot easier to break down than real food. Real food, you really need hydrochloric acid to break it down. But a lot of this processed junk is practically broken down in the package. So when the body can't digest food and get all the nutrients out of that to create fuel for the body, it will sometimes scream for this processed junk that's a lot easier to break down and turn into fuel. So if you have clients that are dealing with significant cravings, check out our video on helping clients improve cravings in the description below and that'll walk you through that process. Sign number 10 is imbalanced blood pressure. And this can actually go either way. So minerals are part of what thicken up our blood and raise our blood pressure. So if you have a client look at their blood pressure at least two hours after a meal and that systolic number or the top number is lower than 112, that's a really strong sign that there's not enough minerals in the system. And that's often because the person can't break the food down well enough to pull the minerals out of that system. 
And on the other side of that, if a person can't break down protein, it's also possible for that undigested protein to kind of gum up the system and thicken up that blood and raise their blood pressure so that there's more pressure needed to push the blood through the system. So that can be another problem from low stomach acid. So we really want to see our clients have their blood pressure in a good range or it might be a problem with digestion. You kind of want to check out what's going on to see what may be pushing that blood pressure the wrong way. So if you want to help clients fix this issue, my book Health Pro Results walks you through how to help clients figure out if there are aspects of digestion that are not working correctly, and if so, what steps are going to help them improve those. And the book is available on Amazon, but I'm going to put a link in the description below this video so you can get the whole thing totally for free. And our BioI membership for health professionals also has done for you courses that you can just give to your clients that walks them through this fixing the digestive process. And you can even sell the courses to your clients and you keep all the money. That's part of the membership. So we'll put a link in the description below for more information about that membership as well. For now, check out our video on helping clients improve digestive issues so you can learn more steps that help clients get past these problems. I can't wait to hear about your results.